This is Sophia. She's from a kid's cartoon called Caleb and Sophia, created by Jehovah's Witnesses. It is pure, unadulterated propaganda for children to try to drag kids into their religion. Now, they've released, I, I think this is number 47 at this point, and they couch them as just nice little life lessons for kids that anybody can appreciate inside or outside the religion. When they knock on your door, if you have a kid with you, they will send their kid to the corner of the room while the adults talk to watch Caleb and Sophia. So what's this show all about, I hear you asking? This latest installment of the series, number 47, is titled, Who Should Be My Friend? And as I'm sure you could guess, the answer is only other Jehovah's Witnesses. Only ever other Jehovah's Witnesses. They are an incredibly insular community who absolutely refuse to accept the idea that children can have friends as outsiders. And I have a few examples of what I'm talking about that I want to go through as we talk about this cartoon. I usually hesitate to cover these live. I'm doing this live at the moment because, you know, I just saw that it popped up and I wanted to watch it. Uh, the reason I hesitate to cover this live is because this is pure unadulterated propaganda. Every moral dilemma you find them in, everything from beginning to end is very specifically and intentionally planned out by the Jehovah's Witness leadership to send a very specific message. Now, with Caleb and Sophia, they have a subtle message and an overarching message. You really have to cross-reference every episode and look at the hidden meaning behind what they're trying to communicate to their members, and that's really hard to do when you're watching it live, but I'll give it a shot. You got this, come on. Go, go, go! Yes. Bro, that was good. So she sees other kids hanging out and wants to hang out too. <laughs> See, and she's sitting here reading a Jehovah's Witness book right now. And she's feeling kind of down about it because she wants to take part in all of the fun and the shenaniganery that all the other kids are doing right now. Oh, that's weird. Why is there an empty bus? Hurry up! We're gonna be late! Yeah, let's go! <laughs> the point is that she's feeling isolated from society. I grew up Jehovah's Witness. I most definitely felt isolated from society, without a doubt. Matter of fact, um, I... I ended up leaving school, like leaving middle school and going into homeschooling. I was so isolated from society at one point that I was watching live news coverage to have some connection with the outside world. It's really, really bad to be isolated to this degree. And that is what they're directly encouraging in kids and in parents with this cartoon. Who should be my friend? And he called them his friends. They're at a uh, kingdom hall now for the non-Jehovah's Witnesses. They're holding their church service. There are no children's programs at the kingdom halls, by the by. The kids have to sit there and listen to these long-winded, protracted, drawn-out, boring talks, just like everybody else. We see throughout the gospel accounts that those who chose to befriend Jesus gained the best friend possible. The point is, don't have friends in school, have friends at the Kingdom Hall. That was the message that was given to me when I was little, too. Unfortunately, there weren't really kids in my Kingdom Hall. Uh, there were a couple. They didn't really like me. We didn't get along very well. They had their own thing going on. Namely, their parents were more okay with them having outside friends than my parents were with me having outside friends. So I was left to sit there alone with no friends at all while they hung out with outsiders. That's really 
the bottom line. Also, my parents weren't viewed as the most spiritual people in the congregation. But the point is, have friends with, it, with people inside the religion, not outside the religion. Doesn't matter if you can't find friends inside, you still can't have friends on the outside. Hey there. Oh, hey. Oh, you like to draw? I like your notes. Really cool. Mom it's, it looks like, it, she's kind of like an adult almost, right? She looks like she's, what, 14 or something? And Sophia's supposed to be how old? Uh, nine, 10 maybe? Hell, maybe eight. I don't know how old they're supposed to be, but it's very obviously a distinct age difference. The point is, it doesn't matter if there's an age difference. Find a way to get along with these people. You cannot have outsiders as friends. Really cool. Mom taught me. Pictures help me remember. Me too. So, looks like we have a talk together. Yeah. I'll get in touch to practice soon. Lydia, we're leaving. Well, I gotta go. See you later, Sophia. Wow, I feel like that character was really stiff. Like, not to criticize the animation, because honestly, the animation is phenomenally good, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's just a really stiff character that, that doesn't move fluidly. Kind of odd. Anyways, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, for a little context here, they have a talk together. Women are not permitted to teach. Uh, they are not allowed to take part in educational anything at all in Jehovah's Witnesses communities. When I was little, though, there was one role a woman could play in the congregation, and that was giving demonstrations. I don't know if it's changed since I left the religion or what, but they would basically have these demonstrations of how you interact with people at the door, like when you're knocking on doors and you get somebody that's difficult or somebody that's interested in this thing or that thing or whatever else. They'd have a couple of women up there doing the demonstrations. That was the only thing they were allowed to do. And I'm assuming they still do it since these two girls have a talk together, quote unquote. Hey, bro. Hey, good to see you. I'm glad I was on your team. My favorite thing was the safari tree house. Yeah, it had all the cool jungle animals on the wall. Timmy, I didn't think your team was going to make it. Okay, so what they're portraying here is all of the, the other students hanging out together and having fun and chit-chatting, and she is not part of that conversation, right? But this character on the left here, the what appears to be the Indian girl, that's not the first time they've, they've shown her, actually. No, wait, maybe it is. Okay, I thought it was, uh, never mind. Disregard, disregard. I thought it was her. Jump the gun on that one. Your team was going to make it. I love my prize. You got a prize? We all did. <laughs> okay, the, the underlying message here is that not only are these kids enjoying each other's company, not only are they having fun, but there's even more to this. They're getting stuff. They're enjoying themselves immensely. And Sophia is left out of it. She's not allowed to take part. So how are Jehovah's Witnesses going to address this, I wonder? Uh, it's just, is it an atom? I guess it's an atom, right? Like with electrons flo floating around it and all that stuff. She's feeling left out, absolutely. This is what it feels like. It sucks. I remember Valentine's Day in school when all of the kids were making Valentine's pouches, hanging them on the side of their desk and making Valentine's for each other and handing them out. And guess who wasn't allowed to do it? Guess who has two thumbs and wasn't allowed to celebrate it? This guy. It sucks, man. It's not fun at all. It's terrible. In fact, I would say it borders on child abuse like it, it's really really terrible it is mentally scarring to be completely left out of everything not allowed to take part in in anything at all and watching other kids 
pass Valentine's out to each other and you're not allowed to. I mean, and then this is coming from somebody who is actually a victim of domestic abuse. Now, I'm not saying this is like physical abuse, but this is most definitely, in my opinion, reaching child abuse levels. Now, I'm assuming that this girl right here is feeling kind of awkward about having this thing because in a previous episode, she was having a talk with Sophia. She appeared to be interested in having a relationship with Sophia to some degree. The only condition under which Sophia is allowed to have a relationship with outsiders is if they are interested in the religion. And they had another episode with this girl right here that we were just looking at asking Sophia about the religion. In that circumstance, it is okay to befriend an outsider. So it's just like one more level of motivation to encourage kids to drag people to the meetings to get them interested in this religion one more layer if you drag them in you can have a friend otherwise you're sol <laughs> okay kids settle down time to get started we have a lot to talk about today She's feeling left out. This is an incredible... You have no idea how common an occurrence it is to feel left out like this. Like I said, the Valentine's Day thing is probably the most glaring example for me. But there was also the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't feel like people should be saying the Pledge of Allegiance anyways in schools. That's like hyper-nationalistic and bizarre. But being left out like that, being separated from everybody else is not good. Before we begin, for those of you that participated in the science club this weekend, we will be having another camping trip. But only the ones with the highest score on the math project will be selected to go. Dude, you honestly don't even have any idea how common it is for schools to do like field trips and then base assignments off of like those field trips or whatever, kind of like this. Um, I wasn't allowed to go on the vast majority of field trips. Every now and then I went on a field trip. But if it was, you know, I mean, right here, they're depicting Sophia skipping a field trip because she's not supposed to associate with outsiders, right? You have no idea how common it is for this occurrence to happen. It's really bad. More on that after class. Hey, now today Sophia, we, we need you in our club. You're good at science. We have another trip coming up. They're like, they just want to include her. That's it. That's all they want. And she cannot be included. It's so deeply sad. Hey, Sophia, come with us. So anyway, all the kids had badges and prizes and stuff. And it sounded like a lot of fun. And it seems like they really need my help. Hmm, I see. So now she's going to try to convince her dad, I guess. And the dad is going to give some good Christian leadership to show what a great person he is and that he won't bend to the worldly pressures. Oh, you see what's wrong with the car? No, I wish. No, I see why you want to be in the club. You do? Of course. We all want to have friends and do fun things. Please, would you mind moving the light over here? Uh, right there. Thank you. I just wish I had some kid friends. Mm. Jehovah wants you and me to have friends. But the question you need to ask yourself is, who should be my friend? Trust me. This mindset leads to full-blown, legit mental trauma. Children are not supposed to be isolated from other children or from the rest of society. Not supposed to happen. We are not built that way. We are social creatures. Matter of fact, in my opinion, solitary confinement in prisons is cruel and unusual punishment. People go in there mostly sane and come out complete train wrecks. 
It's not good to be separate from society like this. Not good at all. And here we sit listening to Jehovah's Witnesses outright encourage it, saying that it's a good thing. This is what you should do. Now, this is by no stretch of the imagination the first example of them doing this. They've been talking about this for a long time. And I'll show some examples in a little while. But it seems like there's a massive push at the moment to get people to accept this, to recognize it, to get a lot more serious about it. It's disgusting. Let's talk about it at our next family worship. How about you go do some research on Martha? Yeah, they do family worship stuff like once a week usually or something. And I will tell Caleb too. And then we can come back together and talk about it as a family. It's effectively guaranteed that Caleb is dealing with this problem too. If the family is this strict, which most Jehovah's Witness families are, some are not, very few. If they are, then it's a virtual guarantee Caleb is, has isolated himself from other friends also. Sophia, are you... Like, and their animation style has changed, in my opinion, for the worse. I think it looks terrible now. Like, just look at this example from this other episode here. This is called Make Jehovah Happy. And the episode is basically encouraging people not to get a college education and not to have outside friends, just like this episode. Just watch like a few seconds to compare and contrast the animation style. Okay, let's just play both at the same time and you can kind of get an idea for the animation differences. See, like even the dad looks a little bit different. Uh, Caleb looks different. Sophia, they all look different. Um, and in my opinion, it looks a lot worse. The shadowing is so weird on the left. This is like Pixar level quality on the right. Why did they change it? It looks awful. It's just, it's really odd that they'd go, like they would, there, there's something wrong with their eyes. I don't know what's wrong with their eyes in the left one. The right one's eyes look much nicer. Anyways, yeah, so that's kind of a compare and contrast of the animation style. Um, Saber Spark, the YouTuber, got, I don't know, 1.5 million subbies or 2 million subbies or something like that. I think he's working on a, a, an animation critique at the moment. I'm not sure when it's coming out or if it's come out or what, but yeah, you should keep a lookout for it on his channel if it, if it hasn't already come out. Defeater of Huns. And that, kids, is why you don't disfellowship your animation team. Exactly. <laughs> That's what happened. They were disfellowshipped, probably. Anyway, let's keep listening to this uh, Caleb and Sophia here. Sophia, are you ready? Yeah. Martha, a Jewess, the sister of Lazarus, and Mary. Why did they call her a Jewess? That's a weird term. I've never heard that before. For the record, um, I haven't seen any anti-Semitism from Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, I'm willing to be convinced otherwise, but uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like they're anti-Semitic at face value, just from what I know of them. And I was a member for like 18 years, so it's just kind of a weird thing to call somebody a Jewess. It's like using the term Jewry. That's like a term that hasn't been used since World War II. It's just really odd. Mary. They lived in Bethany. A village about two miles away from Jerusalem. Which was probably Jesus' home base when he came down from Galilee. Martha liked to cook. <laughs> yes, she did. And she would cook for Jesus and all his disciples when they would visit. Wow, that would have been a lot of food. Yes, and a lot of work. Uh, what what's even happening in this scene? Are they they're just kind of messing with each other? Are these guys married, like all three of them, or what? Is this like a poly relationship, which, by the by, is pretty common in the Old Testament? Just putting it out there. Jehovah's Witnesses like to talk about one man, one woman a lot, but that's not the only type of marriage sanctioned by God. I have to say. I drew a family in school today. Oh wow. I didn't have time to finish Caleb's face. <laughs> Carrie drew two mommies. She told me they're married to each other. See her face drop? Oh my God. 
Only they're married to each other. My teacher says that all that matters is that people love each other and that they're happy. Hmm. Well, people have their own ideas about what is right and wrong. But what matters is how Jehovah feels. Okay, anyways, point is Jehovah's Witnesses are super one man, one woman. That's not really being depicted here, seems to me. But if they work together, they make it a success. However, some of their friends felt differently about Jesus. <laughs> Martha makes the best apricot cakes. It's just a fact. <laughs> You've always praised me too much, Talia. Well, if it gets me more apricot cakes, I will continue to praise you. <laughs> okay, that voice does not fit this animated figure here at all. Uh, I feel like this animated figure should be much, like, larger physically. I don't know. There's something off between the voice and the character, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Talia, did you hear? The teacher Jesus, he's coming back to visit. The man from Galilee? Are you, are you hosting him again? Yes, I am. Actually, it's tonight. I've heard a lot of talk. The Pharisees in Jerusalem, they don't approve of that man. I am not sure it's such a good idea for you to be known as his friend. As far as anybody can tell, if Jesus was even real, which it appears as though he probably was, he was just some weird little cult leader from the era. That's it. He's just a weird little cult leader that ran around convincing people that he was right, just like Jim Jones, although it didn't end that badly with Jesus, I guess. Just like, you know, Marshall Applewhite of Heaven's Gate or any of the others. He didn't even fulfill all of the things that are required to be considered the Messiah. They went back and rewrote all of his history to place him in areas that he simply was not because he had to be in those areas. Right? He was Jesus of Nazareth, but he was born in Bethlehem because his parents had to travel there for a census. What? That has never happened in the history of ever, nor would it. They expect you to believe that Caesar told everybody that you're supposed to go back to the place where your ancestors lived a thousand years ago for a census. Really? Well, first of all, how would you even communicate that to every single human being across the land that they were supposed to go back to their place of origin from a thousand years ago. And second, how would they even know who their ancestors were? I don't know who my ancestors were from a thousand years ago. Do you? It's just a ridiculous story top to bottom. And it's obvious that they, they were trying to rewrite Jesus's story to fit that of the son of man. They were trying to re like, they were trying to retrofit it to make it appear as though he was the Messiah when he just wasn't, seems to me. But that's just my humble opinion. Anyway, let's keep listening to them talk about being dissidents or whatever. Good idea for you to be known as his friend. Okay, well, I guess I better be getting home. See you two later. Yeah, these two on the left are most definitely in a pol in a religious cult, like without a shadow of a doubt. And the girl on the right knows it. And she's like trying to talk him out of it desperately. And they just clam up exactly the same way a Jehovah's Witness would. This is getting awkward. Is this Jesus and his entourage? I assume it is. Martha, Jesus is here. Yeah. His posse, if you will. <laughs> Again, it was just a weird little religious cult at the time. No different than any other that we have today, but it kind of stuck for some reason. <laughs> and 
and they're like all revering these people and everything. It's sad, honestly. You know, not for nothing, but I went to uh, Christmas 2022. I went to Nebraska to see family, and um, we were on the airplane. This does relate to what we're talking about here. Just bear with me for a second. We were on the airplane. We get an announcement from the pilot saying... We're preparing for a crash landing. You need to be in the brace position where, you know, your head is between your legs and all, the whole nine yards, all of that. And uh, it was scary, man. It was scary. It was deeply, deeply scary stuff. You know, you thought you were going to die. You thought that was the end of it. And I thought to myself, it, it popped in my head for a second. You know, there are no atheists in foxholes. I hear that from people constantly. And I thought to myself... I would absolutely love it if any of this stuff was true. It'd be fantastic because I wouldn't have to worry about anything anymore. Unfortunately, I just can't buy this story of Jesus being like a real religious leader. Like he didn't fulfill half the stuff that he was supposed to as the son of man. And that's why they claim that he's coming back a second time, which, by the way, never has, interestingly enough. You can see them retroactively rewriting his story to fit more closely with what the Messiah was supposed to be. Like, it's just nonsense. All of it. It's all nonsense. I, I just can't accept Christianity. I would love it if I could. Now, if you do, that's okay with me. I'm fine with that. But I can't, unfortunately. And once I realize that Christianity is completely made up, that's just the end of it for me. Like, Judaism is very obviously completely made up too, right? I can't possibly... I, Islam is also completely made up. I can't possibly believe any of this stuff. I mean, Christianity would be the most convincing for me because I grew up in it and no other reason. When you really think about it, Christianity is even less convincing than Judaism because you have to accept all of the Judaism stuff and then Christianity on top of it. It's all complete nonsense beginning to end, unfortunately. And it, it, it's just, it's sad to me that people are throwing their lives away, like Jehovah's Witnesses, destroying everything, cutting ties with friends and family to the end of time. They'll be in the grave before they talk to them again. Like my mother, I'll never talk to her again. You know, I had a close relationship with my mom at one point. Like I said, my dad was physically abusive to me at one point, and my mom literally stood in his way a couple of times, and it got ugly for her for doing that. You know, you, you don't realize the level of respect that you can form for somebody until they do something like that, until they literally stand in the way of a swinging fist for you. And after I got disfellowshipped, I never talked to her again, really. Never had a relationship with her ever again for the rest of my life. Because that's what this religion has to offer. Division and fear. That is the entire point of this video that we're watching. Don't be friends with outsiders. Don't be friends with people who reject or even don't accept Jehovah as their savior. Unfortunately, I just can't. I want to. I can't do it. It's nonsense, all of it. And as a direct result of not being able to, I'll never talk to my mom again until the day that she is in a coffin. And I'm not the only one with that experience. I mean, they are putting out propaganda to convince people that's the right way to do things. That's the whole point of this video. I mean, let's keep listening to them try to justify their disgusting, sad beliefs in ridiculousness. Again, Jehovah's Witnesses believe women are not allowed to take part in or teach anything. It's totally against the rules, so I guess they're just sitting there listening. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get this straight. He wanted you and Mary to sit and learn about God just like the men? 
the teacher instructing women, a woman's job is to provide food for her household. That's true. A good woman prepares herself for hard work. That's valuable. That's you, Martha. Don't let this Jesus ruin you with his ideas. Lazarus. Oh, Lazarus died. I forgot about that. I, how did he die? I don't even remember now. So kind of you. How is he doing? Not well. I sent word to Jesus. He will help my brother. You sent word to Jesus? Have you still not heard? He's angering people with his shocking speech. He's claiming to be God's son. He's crazy. He's he... loyal to Jehovah, and he is our friend. Okay, God's name is not Jehovah. Jays didn't exist. In fact, the sound that Jays make did not even exist at the time, okay? The name was Yahweh, not Jehovah. But that's a, a battle for another day. Not going to bother. Uh, they they just rewrite the Bible. It drives me nuts. Uh, it drives me absolutely up a wall. The tetragrammaton is Y H W H, not J H V H. Jesus Christ! Oh yeah, Jesus isn't Jesus's name either. It's Yeshua. Sadly, Lazarus died. But do you remember what happened next? Jesus came back to Bethany and resurrected Lazarus. Jesus was a real friend. He cared about Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And he showed them what kind of friend Jehovah can be to us. Of course, you know, this whole thing is totally unproven. No reason to believe any of it, but okay. I guess it's part of the lore, so let's just go with it. But that's not where the story ends. Do you know what some people did after that? Many of the Jews who saw what he did put faith in him. But some of them went off to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done? Why do hey, fantastic. Go tell the Pharisees what he, what he did. And if it's verifiable that he really did resurrect this person, then everybody will believe it. You know, that's all it would take for me is a miracle. That's all I would have to see. A miracle in God's name, verifiable, couldn't have happened any other way, and boom, just like that, I'm a believer. But have you ever noticed miracle sightings have gone down dramatically since the advent of the camera? Weird, right? Isn't that a coincidence? Why did they do that? Because not even seeing Jesus bring someone back to life was enough to convince them that he was the Christ. They seemed like Martha's friends, but they hated Jesus. How do you think Martha dealt with her unbelieving friends? Jesus is the Christ, the resurrection and the life. So this is another good example of subtle propaganda. They're conflating somebody maliciously hurting you or maliciously hurting people in your life with outsiders. Just People who generally like living their lives and want to be your friend and go on a camping trip with you. They're conflating the two. This is how subtle the propaganda gets. You're not supposed to be friends with anybody outside the religion, no matter how harmless or nice they are, because Jesus was betrayed by people, blah, blah, blah. He is the Son of God, and he is my friend. The only thing that would tie that together better is some snaps. He is my friend. She's got the head bob, not the snaps, but the head bob. Watch the head bob here. And he is my friend. That is one wicked head bob, right? Talia, you've been kind to me in the past, but you don't believe Jesus' teachings. We cannot be friends. This is what I'm talking about right here. There was malice in this situation. 
Sophia's friends at school don't have a malicious bone in their body. They just want to hang out. That's it. But they're conflating malice and hatred and vengefulness with just not believing the same way. Martha stuck with Jesus and his friends. They helped her become Jehovah's friend. And apparently in their minds, that is justification to separate them from the rest of society so thoroughly that they'll have to watch live news coverage to have some connection with the outside world. So, Sophia, what do you think Jehovah is teaching you about friendship? That I have to choose my friends carefully. And how can you know if someone should be your friend? If they help me be Jehovah's friend, I am not going to join the club. That's my girl. We are so proud of you, Sophia. Absolutely disgusting, dude. This is absolutely grotesque. They are perpetuating the most harmful, in my opinion, one of the most harmful beliefs that Jehovah's Witnesses have. A while back, not even that long ago, I did a video about Jehovah's Witnesses and how they protect child abusers, basically, I, you know, that's pretty bad. But that's like a, a high up organizational structure kind of rule. As far as actual full blown beliefs go, in my opinion, this is the worst one. I could be convinced otherwise, but I think this is the worst that you shouldn't have outsiders as friends at all. I think that's pretty bad. And Jehovah is proud of you, too. Now, how about you go finish up your homework? Mom tells me we have a guest coming over. OK. Jehovah, please help me find a good friend. Someone who loves you. Okay, a turtle will do the trick, I suppose. At least you are my friend. Sophia! Lydia is here. And now they portray Sophia getting a friend and everything working out in the end. But guess what? I know from personal experience, this is not how it works. I literally did not have a friend for the majority of my life. I talk. <laughs> you like turtles? I love turtles. Really? God, this is so terribly cringy. I can't stand it. And again, the animation is absolutely awful now. It was so good before. Why did they do it? Why did they change it this way? I've got something I want to show you. He is so cute. She's wearing turtle earrings. Notice this? Like I said, it's little things, but every single thing you see in this cartoon is placed here very specifically for very specific reasons. Even down to the way they part their hair is all very intentional and specific in this cartoon. You know, Sophia, I think we're going to be friends. Yep, definitely friends. Unfortunately, it does not work out that way. It does not always play out for the best. Like I said, it was pretty bad for me. And many, many other like ex-Jehovah's Witnesses that I know suffered terribly under this rule. It's a bad, destructive rule. Now, th this is not a, a message that they've picked up recently. This has been going for a long, long time. Back in, um, what? 2017, yeah. In 2017, they released this thing that is 
I guess you could call affectionately known as the bunker videos. Uh, this is the bunker video. It's 30 minutes long. Now I I've covered it a few times. You know, I'm not going to cover the whole thing, but there is a little segment in it that I wanted to watch. The premise of this video is the great tribulation has come and Jehovah's Witnesses are being targeted and persecuted by world governments because that's going to happen in the end, they believe. And they're hiding in basements like Jews in World War II. Dead serious. They're going around the circle telling stories to each other about what it's like to be a Jehovah's Witness or whatever and how hard it is to stay strong and all that other stuff. So this is the head of the household, the leader of the little congregation they have here in the basement. And he's about to hear, listen to a story from his wife, which is this woman here on screen. Listen to the story that she tells as they sit in this basement like Jews during the Holocaust. And not to put you on the spot, but didn't you have an experience? Mm -hmm. I did. And I don't mind sharing. They're terrible actors. They're so cringy. Literally everything about this is cringy. It was when I was at that office job in the city. It was just coffee as usual. Karen, we're making some coffee. Did you want some? Oh, I'd love it. The good stuff, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> Thanks. Boy, I can smell it. God, it's so cringy. I'm sorry. I can't. They're so terrible. But notice what she said at the very beginning of this. Like, it's it just started with coffee. It starts with coffee, right? What starts with coffee, I hear you asking? And somebody brought treats. It's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. To her, things going but this time, she started telling me about her problems at home. So, John, he got a text message from his ex-girlfriend. No, that must be very hard for you. Yeah, it is. You know, there are some things in the Bible that have helped me in my marriage that I would love to show you. I was excited about the chance to give a witness. Yeah. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning. Is that for so uh, the point that she's getting at here is she was excited to talk to this woman about Jehovah. Th the idea being portrayed here is she was hoping she's going to be able to bring her into the religion and they'd remain friends. But she realized shortly after she wasn't going to be able to pull her into the religion. Which means, by the distributive property or transitive property or whatever, she's not going to be allowed to remain friends with her at all. If she's not a member of the religion, they cannot remain friends. From time to time, we talked, kept the conversations brief, and that was it. Hey! But over time, the conversations grew. And husbands and family were often the hot topic. And everyone had a viewpoint. Again, it's not about the conversations, ultimately. It's about the fact that they're outsiders. That's the problem in their eyes. They don't, quote-unquote, hold the same values as you. So you can't take part in their life in any way unless you can bring them into the religion. Not only children, but even adults are not allowed to have outsiders as friends. If I may, there's some things in the scriptures that I think... I still thought I could give a witness and actually teach them something about Jehovah. No. Um, honey, it doesn't work like that. No. Sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, Karen. Too much information, right? Mm. <laughs> you know, with a husband... But in reality... I was the one being taught. You know, honestly, most people, if they understand your boundaries, won't cross those boundaries. If you tell somebody, I don't want to hear about your sex life or something, they're not going to tell you about it. They're not going to take part in any of that. They're, they'll respect you. But again, this is propaganda. They want to make it out like the world doesn't have boundaries. There are no boundaries in the world, quote unquote. And... As a result, you are incapable of living in the world. You're incapable of being friends with people outside the religion because they will consistently violate your boundaries, always, and pull you away from Jehovah. But in reality, I was the one being taught. And I was a quick learner. I was sure their thinking wasn't rubbing off on me until one day when Robert called. The girls knew that Robert and I had had a small disagreement that morning. And he was calling to apologize. Although some of it was my fault. Karen, did you want to get a little coffee? Mm. 
No, it's him. If you don't want to talk to him now, then don't. Besides, it sounds like he could use a little silent treatment. I couldn't believe the effect the association was having on my attitude and my marriage. You know, it's like they're portraying their people, Jehovah's Witnesses, as the dumbest, most gullible suckers alive. You're not allowed to have friends as outsiders, period. Child, adult, whatever, doesn't matter. You have no idea how many lives this wrecks. You have no idea how many people have lost their mother, have lost their, their father, their aunts, their uncles, their cousins, their best friends growing up, everybody, every single person that they ever knew is gone permanently until the day they die because of this religion. People that really meant something to others are gone. We have to do everything we can to wake people up out of this destructive mindset. We cannot give up on this. Having the experience of living on the inside and the outside, I can attest living on the outside is the best decision I ever made in my life. Anyway, let me know what you think about the Caleb and Sophia video in the comments. And let me know if you want to see more stuff like this.